And guess what? I have my parents here over there. Because I didn't check my phone this morning, so I didn't know that they would come today. So it's it's a surprising for me. So uh, I'm I'm working as a teacher for uh, kindergarten students uh, in a small school around Chimbabwe area over here, and uh, I'm also now a seminary seminary school student. I'm in the semester five now. Yeah. Okay. So today it's my turn to share about uh, good news. So let us start. Had to pray before we start. Uh, Lord Jesus, we thank you for today. Thank you for the opportunity for all of us to share, to hear about another good news from you. Prepare our hearts one by one, person, person by person. To be ready uh, to put your seed uh, from your word. Thank you, Lord Jesus. Uh, lead us, uh, Holy Spirit, from start until finish. In your name we pray. Amen. Okay, first of all, uh, I think our talks about, uh, about soul has been uh, so much further than, than today because uh, so sorry because today's talk is going to be a little bit back to the story about soul, about uh, first encounter that uh, soul experience. So uh, there's a question here: What comes to mind when we talk about soul? Uh, for me personally, uh, I would say that soul was uh, a great, a great man. He's a great man, firm in his faith and uh, fiery, conservative, and full of wisdom, of course. And uh, Saul had a very, very special relationship with God. In addition, we may also know that Saul's past, Saul's past was very, very dark before he knew Jesus in his life. And uh, some of us know that he was one of the leaders who was very fiery to destroy the church in Jerusalem. Saul was also the one who guarded the clothes of the murderers of one, the first martyrs, the first Christ martyrs. Uh, uh, his name is Stephen. Yeah, Stephen. And it was during this murder that the figure of Saul appeared for the first time. So, uh, speak, speaking about Acts, the book of Acts, Acts in its original Greek language is praxis, praxis, which also means action, practice, deed, or effect. So the Acts contains many stories about the apostles of Christ, starting from the Father's promise of another helper, the Holy Spirit, and the apostles were eagerly waiting for the promise. The momentum was on the day of Pentecost. Yeah, the Pentecost, when the Holy Spirit came to fill the apostles and continued with the events of the mighty deeds of the Holy Spirit to the apostles, with uh, you know signs of miracles, uh, sermons filled with a new anointing, and the story of the apostles is filled with the twist and turns of the journey of God's children at that time. So I personally uh, recommend all of us to take a deeper look at the story written in the 28 chapters uh, in, in Book of Acts. So before we go deeper into the encounter of Saul, I would like to introduce you all to two persons. The first person's name is Cornelius. Cornelius, he is a Centurion, devout and God-fearing, very generous uh, to those in need, prayed to God regularly and respected by all the Jewish people. Possibly, Cornelius was only intending to honor Peter as one having a rank superior to his own since he was uh, God's messenger. I think we have a picture of yes. Uh, 
But Peter allowed no chance of misunderstanding. He was not to be worshipped as more than a created being. So Peter just said, no, 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 not me. Not, it's not about me. It's all about God. It is written in Acts 10, verse 1 to 48. So Cornelius' encounter with God also sounds similar to Saul. When one day, an angel of God came to him and said, and, and called him, Cornelius, Cornelius stared at an angel with fear and asked, What is it, Lord? And the story continues when Peter goes to Cornelius' house. Cornelius, like the Bible mentioned, as I mentioned before also, is a devout and God-fearing, also generous to those in need. And above all, he prayed to God regularly. So there must be something to be done by Cornelius above everything. It looks like he is already walking in God's way. So I'm also wondering, what's it, what is it then? So Peter began to speak. He started to tell Cornelius about the story of Jesus. This is the point. That through Jesus Christ, the Lord of all, God sent him as a good news of peace. Is that, ha is that happened? Throughout Judea, beginning in Galilee after the baptism that John preached. And how God anointed Jesus with the Holy Spirit and power. How he went around doing good and healing all who were under the power of the devil. Then Jesus died, hanging on the cross and raised from the dead on the third day. Although he was not seen by all the people, but, but by witnesses for whom God already chosen, actually ate and drank with him after he rose from the dead. And Jesus commanded to preach to the people and to testify that he is the one whom God appointed as a judge of the living and the dead. And all who believe on him receive forgiveness of sins only through his only through his name and while Peter explained about these things to Cornelius the Holy Spirit came on all who heard the message the gift of the Holy Spirit poured out to everyone then Peter said can anyone keep these people from being baptized with water They have received the Holy Spirit just as we have. So Peter ordered that they be baptized in the name of Jesus Christ. In this part, I would like to emphasize that water baptism service is a symbol of a belief, a declaration in front of fellow believer of Jesus that we bury our old selves and raise with Jesus. And the story of Cornelius might end here, but the baptism that Cornelius did is an important event in the history of the early Christian church up until today. So Cornelius, he was the first person. So the next person is, her name is Sayaka. Yeah. It is my privilege to have her with me in my first message. I would like to invite her to uh, to story about her own story of encountering with Jesus.
was carrying my van cell, because this picture was taken uh, when I turned to grade one. So becoming grade one is a big thing in Japan. We have special family, parents come to the school, and we have big, big celebration at school. Oh, and uh, one more. The little one is my younger sister. <laughs> and um, like I said, I was born in Japan and was raised at Orion, Japanese family. That means my family, none of my family is not believer. Until now, but my parents, my sister, and my grandparents, my cousins, all my brothers know I became Christian. They know, and they just accept how I am. But uh, Christian population, is in Japan. It's still one percent. It's very few. I've been telling this 20 years, but still, it's not included in yet. So I hope the percentage of Christian population will be out someday. So um, Martin asked me to tell uh, you all how I met Jesus, because uh, in Japan mostly it's like a Buddhist. But it's not really good. For some people, like my grandparents' generation, my, maybe my great grandparents' generation, they are real Buddhists. So I don't exactly know what they do, but it's like a culture thing. And of course, field trip of school, uh, teachers uh, take us to the temple, like a Kyoto. You know, Kyoto is a beautiful Kyoto temple. Is very beautiful temple. But we go there, uh, we visit a couple of uh, temples at school, but um, we don't really pray. But we have to learn pray, but we visit the temples because we have to learn Japanese history. What which samurai made this temple and the very history. That's what we used to do, and until now, the school, uh, all the school do it, until now. So I learned uh, the Japanese history, but I wasn't really sure about God. I know there is God, but in Japan, my parents always said, okay, that's Fuji, Mount Fuji, they have the God of Mount Fuji, and the river, there is a, this river, uh, it has a god, and uh, also the ocean, uh, there is a god, or the ocean. But I always ask my parents, so who made this god? Mountain god, river god, ocean god? And my parents couldn't answer, even my teacher. And I, I asked my friends, do, do you know who is god? Uh, where does this god come from? Nobody answered. I was the one always asked, why? Why, uh, why do you do this? Why is it uh, like this? Why, why, why? So sometimes I, probably I, I know it's my parents. <laughs> my mom has a younger sister. See, this is very, really easy. I do, but I wanted to ask, where do you come from? Where do you come from? Where do you come from? Where do my dad come from? Okay, your dad come from your grandparents. Okay, so my grandparents, uh, where they come from? Uh, from great parents. Okay, where, uh, where did your grandparents come from? And sometimes at school we have to uh, plant the seeds. Like a uh, great one, we have big science project. It's all school thing. We plant the sunflower seeds. And I asked the teacher, where did you get uh, seeds? She said, uh, we bought uh, the supplier, uh, this is close to the school. No, I'm not asking the supplier. I, I know uh, the school bought the store, but this, where did the store get the seeds? Where did the seeds come from? The seeds from the flower. Mm, okay, where, where did the flower come from? <laughs> uh, the flower from the ground, the soil. Where did the soil come from? So many questions, I'm sure. I thought I was teaching in a science class. But I was like that. I just wanted to know. But nobody could answer the right answer that I 
I hope that, that makes sense. So um, when I turned grade one, I never heard about Jesus. But I knew Christmas. Christmas is the time. Santa Claus is the time. And I can get a present. And we have family party, we have family gathering, and then we order. And my parents order Christmas cake. And in Japan, we order KFC. I don't know why. <laughs>
And it's usually we go to school, there's no Zoom book, there's no driver. We carry the staff, myself and the staff, and then we walk down to the school, 30 minutes, 40 minutes, sometimes one hour by yourself. So it was not so far from my apartment. My mom says, okay, here we go. And I said, okay. And my mom says, you should be back by 10. Okay, but the traffic start A, so it was plenty of time. I could come back at 10, and then kept uh, promise with my mom. And I went to Sunday school again, and the teacher rem uh, remembered me Hi, Sayaka Dan. Hi, Sayaka. And I was happy to see Sunday school teacher in the hospital school. And just like I did from home, we sit down, the kids sit down, and we worship together, and we pray together. And I heard Heavenly Father again. So he said, Heavenly Father again, who is Father? And that's, that was my question. I always ask, like, uh, Father, where do you come from? So my dad says, I come from your grandparents. That was the answer. And I tried to ask uh, Sunday school teacher, who is Heavenly Father? Heavenly Father is the creator. Creator? I didn't understand. Okay, what is creator? Who is creator? Who made your parents? That was answer what I wanted. That all makes sense. I asked my Sunday school teacher. So, who is Jesus? Jesus is son of God. Okay, son. He has son. Okay. <laughs> and uh, where does love come from? Of uh, God, creator? Created the flower. That was the right answer <laughs> that I wanted to hear. It all makes sense for me. And uh, another thing, uh, he just started meeting Genesis, and I knew, okay, the human being, where did human being come from? My grand, yeah, great, 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 great grandparents, but the first human being God created. All makes sense. And I started uh, learning and the teacher, next Sunday the teacher uh, read for us a Moses, Moses split the ocean. And I thought it was something. It was really something. Because my grandpa is the reason he can get the candies from the story. He just take it and a hundred of candies like this. He just take the storybook and a hundred of candies up, or my grandpa can turn tissue to udon, like my grandma udon. But I thought, my grandpa cannot split the ocean. <laughs> it's not a magic. So I started more curious about the story of the Bible. I uh, tried to find the book of the Bible, but literally, but unfortunately, the Christianity is not I couldn't find the story of the Bible. So I kept going to Sunday school. And now, today, <laughs> I talk about Jesus. Thank you. So we have kind of living with this of how Sayaka encountered Jesus at her little yeah, little time. So here is a question for the rest of you. Do we all remember the first time we met and knew Jesus? Yeah. Oh, one, more, one more time. Do we all remember the first time we met and knew Jesus? So this will be the main focus of today's uh, sermon. The first encounter of the apostles back then must have been much more real because Jesus was actually in their presence. So the apostles lived daily life together with Jesus. They took part in every miracles that Jesus performed. And they also worked together with Jesus distributing the five loaves and two fishes and collecting the remains of 12, 12 baskets. They experienced the last time they, they saw Jesus being taken up into heaven and cloud covering Jesus in the sky. And we all know that uh, souls encounter with Jesus. Uh, 
during Saul's journey to the high priest for a letter of authorization that he could use to perceive the state of Saul's heart to threaten and kill Jesus' disciples. But before Saul reached the destination of his journey, Jesus called his name and asked him directly, Saul, Saul, why do you persecute me? And Saul answered, Who are you, Lord? He said, I am Jesus, whom you are persecuting. Now get up and go into the city, and you will be told what you must do. Here we see that our Lord is not a judgmental God with a super sharp hammer or sword, a long, list of, a long list of accusations against us, but Jesus just asked a simple question that opened up everything that was occupying Saul's heart at that time. Not only that, but Jesus also revealed himself personally to Saul that it was him who Saul had been persecuting all along. This, is, this first encounter with Saul, Saul carried with himself wherever he went. Not just carried, but Saul spoke about it, shared it as a living testimony to his surroundings. In Acts chapter 22, we see Saul recounting his first encounter with Jesus to the Jews in great detail. Another time, when Saul was really pressured by a Jewish group who were really against Saul, and even this Jewish group refused to eat and drink before seeing Saul killed. This Jewish group continued to struggle to raise their voices and demands to the chief priests elders, governors, then to the emperor, and finally before Agrippa, the uh, king. At that time, Saul also recounted his first encounter with Jesus in detail again and again. Uh, it is written in chapter 26. The stories written in the text also tell of the journey of the apostles, who wherever they went, they always carried the name of Jesus and his beauty in every action, sermons, and miracles events that occurred, all of which they did in the name of Jesus Christ. So we can all recognize that the preaching of Jesus is the most important thing in our lives, but without having a personal encounter with Jesus, it might be different. Personal encounters with Jesus that may truly change hearts break hearts, ignite spirits, or other versions that differ among us. Our personal encounter with Jesus may be different from the personal encounters of Jesus' disciples and so. So what I want to highlight is how Jesus called soul. There are three points we can get from that calling. The number one is Jesus called soul by name. Uh, Acts 9 verse 4 b Jesus has known us long before others know, have known us, and Jesus knows us too, even though not so many people know us. Jesus once explained that he is a good shepherd in John 10, verse 3. The gatekeeper opens the gate for him, and the sheep listen to his voice. He calls his own sheep by name and leads them out. And the number two is Jesus desires to know Mark. To know, to know us more deeply. Jesus desires communication as Jesus asks Saul the first question, why are you persecuting me? Although Saul did not give any answers to the question of Jesus asked him. Jesus did not rely on what excuses Saul would have made if, if Saul could have done so. Jesus held on to the earliest plan in Saul's life to be his instrument regardless of the evil things Saul had done in his life. And the number three, Jesus is truly the Son of God. When Saul had a personal encounter with Jesus, something significant happened. Immediately, he preached Jesus in the synagogue, saying that Jesus is the Son of God, from Acts 9, verse 20. This is the firm foundation for all of us in, no, in following Jesus, the core of our preaching of Jesus. 
If anyone acknowledges that Jesus is the Son of God, God lives in them and they in God. This is from 1 John 4, verse 15. And I think I'll uh, share one more encounter story from this picture. Yeah. It was me. <laughs> it was me. Yeah. It was me. So, uh, what I saw from the photo was a little Martin, a little me, who was still inno innocent. Maybe it was a photo of, I think, uh, my uh, third birthday party. Maybe a yeah, third birthday party. A little, a little Martin who doesn't know who will happen in the next few years, which imprints and forms the identity of a Martin. No one knew that he would be physically and sexually abused by those closest to him. Uh, there were many good memories during his childhood. Because of these two bad experiences, Martin or Mia lived with hatred and he couldn't deal with it for many years until he grew up. One turning point was in 1985, which I remember I was eight years old. I was participating in the annual children's event. And before the event finished, the speaker challenged the children to come forward to the altar, and I was one of them. At that moment, I raised my two hands, and I sobbed. I cried. I couldn't help but tears kept flowing with the question in my heart. What was it? I didn't understand at all. What was it? But this is the story of my encounter with Jesus. My life didn't change drastically after that. But my experience of meeting Jesus at that time is always with me. I am bringing it everywhere and I am ready to share my story. Martin, who is standing in front of you, is broken Martin, but has been revealed by the love of Jesus. Let us never forget that encounter, our personal encounter with Jesus. Let us keep bringing the Lord Jesus Christ into our lives. Both Cornelius and Saul experienced almost the same way of encounter with God. There are similarities that both Cornelius and Saul had someone pray over them. Though Saul knows the scriptures and has a divine encounter, the mark of an apostle, Cornelius needs Peter to renounce Jesus and the scriptures. So I do believe that we, all of us here, I think we know that somebody is praying for each one of you. So it's a, it's a power, it's a power for all of us, our spirit. So today might be the day, a starting line of letting Jesus lead your life to admit that Jesus, that we need Jesus in our lives, that we cannot walk this life alone, to believe that Jesus is the only one who is the perfect companion for us to commit our whole life to walk with Jesus and to hold on to his sovereignty. Let us pray. Thank you, Jesus, for never ever give up on all of us. Thank you for each one of us, person by person, encounter with you, Lord. We want to keep it, we want to bring it, we want to really have it as a treasure in our lives, Lord. We want to share to others who never experienced it before. Thank you, Lord, for your grace, for your mercy, for your work of salvation. We love you, Jesus. In the name of Jesus, we pray. Amen. Thank you. Thank you.
you, Martin, where you're sitting, I just feel like someone is listening to two thoughts. Just bow your head, pray for yourself, and if you don't need a touch from Jesus, pray for the person beside you. Would you do that? All right, let's pray. God, you know us. You know our wounds and our suffering and our hurt. And you know how to heal us. You know, oh God, those of us who are very sure of our religion, but not sure of you. And we pray that as we met Cornelius and Saul, and Sayanka and Martin, that you would meet us right where we sit. Make yourself known to us in all this week. As we read the scriptures, as we cry out to you, we want to know you. We want to know that precious name, and we want our name to be known by you. God, we want you to call us to instruct us. We believe that you are for us, oh God. And we commit our ways to you in the name of Jesus. In thanksgiving we pray. Amen. You know, it would be great to hear from you what the Holy Spirit was saying to you as you were listening to Martin do a great job. Martin, Sayaka, thank you, thank you. But if, if the Holy Spirit was speaking to your heart, one of the things we love to hear is how God is at work through His Holy Spirit as we listen to His Word and so on. So if you've got something you'd like to share, just raise your hand and Rosemary and I will get the mic to you. Okay. Hello. Hello. Uh, yeah. So I tell you what might touch my heart is when Martin asked, like, why do you encounter God? Yeah. So, so I was just wondering, right? So maybe not many of you know, but I'm a tsunami survivor. When you remember when Aceh has a tsunami, I was in Phuket and I was really hit by tsunami and I see the wave coming. And at that time, I wasn't thinking that much, but then, after the wave hit me and I saw that so many people, like, they all, like, injured, like, very bad injuries, so at that time, I don't have much injury, so it's only, like, bruise over, like, I, but then I still, like, the most, um, how do you say, the most uh, amazing things, because we were in Ireland at that time, I was in Hong Island. So we don't have much uh, room left, but we have to climb uh, like the rock to save our life. So everybody was like, like go towards the inland, like uh, go to the higher ground. But we were thinking like, where is the higher ground? So at that time, with all the injuries, we managed to climb a rock. It was uh, like, it's just uh, like we couldn't figure out like, how we can like with a broken leg, broken head, everything broken. like. It's but at that time, because of the maybe the adrenaline rush, so we were just able to escape. 
So when Martin said like when you are under God, so we were like because I was like with that people at the time. So after that, like they said like you have to talk about it. So it will not give you like a traumatic <coughs> experience. So we were talk about it, and then we were talking like, oh, what are you thinking at that time when the wave hits you? Like, are you thinking like I'm going to die or will I die here? You know, like. And my friends said like, what are you thinking? Like, oh, what happened with my money? What happened with my, you know, like. But and when I was thinking also, I was like, oh, what happened with my car? <laughs> you know, like I was thinking at that time, but then. Uh, we were thinking uh, when Martin said uh, when you were encountered with Jesus, I was thinking actually I I have a second chance to live. Like, it's not many people can survive at that time with the tsunami. But why was I was thinking like what happened to my car? You know, like uh, what will happen to my car? But then uh, we were talking about like actually um, at that time after we talked about this, so uh, we actually said like this is the second chance that we have from God, like, so we have to live the way, like, uh, according to God's will, so at the time I wasn't, like, really going to the church, but we had a small group, so, at that morning, the, uh, point, uh, turning point, so, actually, uh, me and my friend said, like, yeah, probably this is our time, like, try to serve God, like, to, because, when I was living in Phuket, it's not much about the ministry. Like, I don't go to the church, but my goal is just to show people like I'm different from others because I have God. So that is actually show in my workplace and people notice like why you are not, because I'm working with the foreigners and normally the foreigners, they swear a lot. And so that's uh, my colleague actually said, like, why you don't wear the swear words? I said, like, why do I swear? Uh, you know, when we have conversation, like, we just have a normal concentration. Why we have to put all these swear words in the conversation? So then, yeah, I was thinking, actually, through our behavior also, like, people can notice things because we have that in our heart. You know, I used to teach uh, theology class, I still do, but one of the great lines in the textbook was, the universal search for God is always frustrated unless it turns around and becomes God's search for mankind. And one of the common elements from the stories that Martin told Syaka's story and so on, as we search for God, God finds us. What we cannot do, God does. And that's such a cool thing. And you know, I, I really want to encourage you, if you're praying for people who don't know God yet, if they are looking for God, God will find them. And I just really want to encourage you with that. Any, anybody else has something to share? Thank you. 
faceless mess of humanity, but he died for individual people. And our names were written on the palms of his hands as he died on the cross. And, and our names were in his thoughts. I was just amazed to hear the testimonies of Martin Sayaka. I've been on my own ministry for the last 12 years. I've gone around a lot of places. I've seen a lot of people uh, repent because they listened to the Bible or read the Bible. But I was amazed how, how that can touch very young people. Martin Zayak. They were first grader, eight years old. So he was, he was, yes, he was out of curiosity in, in Zayaka stories. Want to know a lot of things. But, like you said, it was God found. So, it, it's really by grace alone. So like that. I was listening. I'm just thankful to the people who gave the flyer and posted on the bulletin board and to the one who made the other call. So somehow, in one way or another, we will also be called to do that and then God will make the way. He will be the one who follows me so that um, these people will be really safe. Really Never underestimate what God is doing through you. Putting up a bulletin board, not swearing at work. <laughs> Inviting somebody to go and get snacks. Whatever it is, God is at work. And even if you're on the way to try to kill people, like Saul Paul was. Don't be that person. Yeah, don't be that person. But, but you know, God is at work, and what an incredible God we have, and what a privilege it is to know and serve Him and love Him.